Hello everyone, my name is Michael from Polygon Island and today I'm going to be teaching you how to make this procedural nebula. Um, here's the node setup. Um, it looks complicated, um, it's pretty simple, it's pretty much a lot of the same nodes. So I'm going to be teaching you how to make it today. Um, so first thing we're going to go open a new project. Um, I'm going to save this. We're just going to open a new project and the first thing we're going to do is actually not delete the default cube. Um, if you really want to, if you really just spite the guy, you can delete it and add in a new one. Um, but we're going to keep this default cube and we're just going to position our camera for now in front of it. So, um, just go in front of the cube. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect, just where we're in front of it. Hit Control, Alt, and Zero on your keyboard to put your camera in front of it. Um, if you hit N on your keyboard, um, and you select our camera um, and you see the rotation you can change these to even amounts so 90 degrees, 0 degrees and 0 degrees and then we can just position the camera by hitting G on our keyboard with it selected until our cube is in frame so um, we can end to close this little toolbar and now what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go right into the shader editor um, by going under our blender logo until our cursor turns into this little crosshair we're going to click and drag over until we have a little window. Uh, this will duplicate our window and now what we can do is we can go back under the Blender logo we can click here and go into Shader Editor. Um, we can click N to close this little toolbar um, and now we can select our cube or we can either select it from up here in the hierarchy or from uh, just our viewport um, and we have this material already set up here um, but we're actually going to click on this principal BSDF and we're going to delete this uh, we're going to hit shift A and we're going to type in principal but we're going to go to the principal volume um, we can drag that and just place it and we can connect the volume of the principal volume to the volume of the material output if you don't uh, if you put it into surface it won't render because it's not a surface material it's a volume material um, so now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and just to um, make some things a lot easier we can go up to edit um, over here at the top left and go to preferences um, add-ons and just make sure node wrangler is enabled um, this just makes working with nodes a lot easier um, if you we're not going to use it much in this tutorial but just for future reference it makes working with nodes a lot easier so uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, shift a um, and we're going to type in mapping uh, we're going to add a mapping node and just drop it down and we're going to hit shift a and we're going to add a texture coordinate node so texture coordinate and just drop this down in front of the mapping node um, so I'm going to expand this just a little bit um, so now once we have our texture coordinate and mapping node we can go ahead and select uh, go to the object of our texture coordinate and just put this into the top vector of our mapping node um, and now once we have this what we can do is we're going to shift a and now we're going to add a gradient texture uh, so we can drop our gradient texture in here uh, we're going to change linear to spherical and we're going to connect the vectors up and we put the uh, color of the gradient texture into the density of the principled volume um, next thing what we're going to do um, is we're going to go ahead uh, we're going to go into rendered view right here uh, first we're going to uh, Actually, we don't have to do anything there. Uh, first, we are going to add a light. Uh, we're going to add a light right in the middle of it just so it's a little bit easier to see. We can turn this power up to like a 1,000 um, just so we can see our uh, circle right here. Um, give me this light. Just so we can see our circle right here. Um, next thing we're going to do is we are going to add a noise texture. So shift A, um, add a noise texture. Um, next we're going to add a math node. And next we're going to add a color ramp node. So uh, once we have this, what we can go ahead and do is we can uh, change our math node to multiply um, and just connect the factor into, connect the factor of the noise texture into the factor of the color ramp. And they connect the color ramp color into the first of our multiply okay next what we're going to do is we are going to add a another math node we can go ahead and just duplicate this by selecting it hitting shift D and we're gonna drop it into our uh, gradient texture right here we can just drop it in here or you can connect these up manually uh, but now what we're going to do is we're gonna set this to subtract and we're going to plug the multiply value from our original math node into this on the subtract um, and we wait a second for it to render and now we have this kind of shape 
going on right here. So uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to duplicate all three of these nodes. Um, if you start messing with this uh, original noise texture, um, you should be able to see we start getting a little bit more definition on the edges if we turn this detail up to like 10. Um, we start turning the roughness up. We start getting a little bit of detail on the edges right there. Um, so just turn these, uh, turn the detail and roughness up a little bit. Um, I would say something like a brown 0.7 ish would be alright. You don't want to go too high on it. Uh, but once we have uh, these three um, duplicated, what we can go ahead and do is we can go ahead and just connect these up again, um, just like how we did earlier. Um, and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to multiply these together. So just drag this and connect it up right here and we can drag the value of this multiply up into here and so now we wait just a second and now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take this texture coordinate and take the object of this and put it down into the vector of this noise texture and so now when we start messing with the detail and scale and roughness of this we start getting a tiny bit more of a cloud texture and now we can start messing with these color ramps. Um, so when we start messing with these color ramps, you might start noticing something going on. Um, so if we start messing with these, you can start to notice we start getting a little bit more of that cloud-like texture. Um, so these color ramps are going to be your main controlling parts of your nebula. Um, these are pretty hard to get right, um, but uh, when you do they kind of make your nebula look a little better. Um, so um, if you um, are looking at this and it looks very pixelated and you don't like that, what we can go ahead and do is we can go up to our render tab and then under volumetrics we can change our tile size down. Uh, I'm going to change mine to 2 because I can handle it. Um, but if, you, uh, if your computer starts chugging or anything, you might want to change this tile size to something like 4 or keep it on 8. Um, so um, when we start to do this, we start kind of noticing, we start getting these wisps and all that. Um, this is good. This is what we want. It's looking very uh, nebula-like. Um, and and now what we're actually going to do um, is for this noise texture, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to... Uh, take our mapping node up here we're gonna hit shift D we're gonna delete uh, we're gonna duplicate it um, and then just drop it in front of our noise texture um, and now what we're going to do um, once this loads um, we start getting this little thing right here uh, and I'm gonna add in a noise to another noise texture um, just to um, right in front of this mapping node just to kind of give it a little bit more variation um, I might do that actually yeah um, so if we do this and increase the roughness and all that um, I'm actually going to uh, keep this as just this So yeah, uh, we keep that at that, and now what we can go ahead and do, uh, we can increase these multiply values to make it a little bit brighter. If we want, um, I'm going to increase these, and now what we can go ahead and do, is we can just adjust these details and all that good stuff. Um, you can kind of just play around with these noise textures and stuff. Um, you can add, subtract from, do all kinds of different stuff here. Um, I'm going to stay with something like that for now. Um, play with the distortion a little bit so 
something like that. Um, so now we have something like this. Um, it's looking very cloud-like, looking pretty nebula-like-ish. Um, so now once we have this basic kind of material down, um, what we can go ahead and do now is we can duplicate this um, and we can add in another color ramp. Um, and now what we're going to do is we're going to connect this multiply into the value of the color ramp and we can go ahead and just select some colors so I'm gonna go with this kind of bluish color right here and then on the black I'm gonna change it uh, to white and then change it to this kind of orangey color um, and now what we can do is we can take the multiply of this um, put it into one of the values and then take our color ramp and put it into the color of our um, volume and so now you can see that our volume now has that orange color and if we bring this blue down we should start to see some of that blue in there as well yeah like that um, I'm gonna change my background color to black just so we can see this a little bit better um, and I'm going to change this multiply value to something like 2 um, and bring this down a little bit until we have something like this um, and then you can just from here basically just play around with everything uh, once you have this material here um, you can just play around with the color ramps um, try not to make it look too spherical if you're trying to do like an outer shot of it or you can um, if you feel like that looks good um, but I'm gonna go with something like this for now um, I feel like that looks pretty good um, you can um, pretty much just add stuff from here um, if you want to experiment um, with nodes and try to dragging and dropping stuff but uh, I'm gonna leave the tutorial here because I feel like this looks pretty decent um, and I got pretty much everything down um, but yeah um, basically a um, bunch of noise textures uh, this gradient texture gives the um, thing its actual shape uh, these noise texture just kind of confuzzles it a little bit. Um, these color ramps control the intensity of the nebula and the inner nebula. Um, and yeah, um, hopefully you guys enjoyed. Hopefully you guys learned something, how to make a nebula. Um, also, you can go ahead and increase the samples of your volumetrics. Um, I'd say something like 256. And now we have this really cool looking kind of nebula thing going on. Um, you can also adjust the colors to anything you want, um, like if I wanted this pink kind of nebula, um, I could have this like blue and purple thing going, or blue and um, whatever thing going on, um, but yeah, um, I'd say this looks pretty cool, um, so thanks guys so much for watching, my name is Michael from Polygon Island, if you learned something, hit the like button, subscribe, that really helps me out. But thanks guys so much. My name is Michael from Polygon Island, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.